tried to make this video several times and I'm kind of getting frustrated because it's like mostly insecurities that is causing me to have issues. Um, I did film a whole video and said what I wanted pretty much, but I wasn't looking in the viewfinder or the lens, whatever you want to call it. I wasn't working, looking in the right area of the screen. So I've done that a few times where I'm looking over to the side and the reason I do that is because I'm on that side of the screen and um, I don't know, it just, I want to talk to the person that I see and I'm the person I see and looking into the camera lens is hard because of how small it is. Y'all obviously have noticed that I've got my nose pierced. Um, I will talk about that in this video, but at the end, I want to talk about um, my recent doctor's appointment. Um, not the, yeah, not the most recent, recent one, like the tilt table test. I'm talking about the EEG thing. Um, I called my doctor and I told her that um, I've been more vocal and um, my movements are changing. I don't know how to explain it. It's changing like super fast like one day I could not have a certain sound or movement and then the next day I have it I still think it's Tourette's um, I was told it was myoclonic jerks in the beginning when I first came and saw her my arms were just jumping up in the air <sighs> and then from the amount of time it took to get all the tests done they had already started changing and I was getting louder and my head started moving to the side and um, I put a video up talking about how they were myoclonic jerks and we were not definitely sure what type and something like that and I retitled it because they're involuntary movements pretty much but we don't know what's causing it hold on Lily wants me the way they looked and stuff she thought they were seizures um, I also told her I think it's Tourette's. I've looked into Tourette's and it kind of feels like Tourette's because I can stop it a little bit for like, like some of them are totally involuntary and um, some of them are semi-involuntary, which means like I can feel it coming like in the back of my neck or whatever and I can hold off for it, but eventually it's kind of like holding your breath. If you hold your breath, eventually, no matter what you do, you're going to inhale. It's just an mm -hmm. automatic thing. So, um, some of the ones that I've been doing are, um, loud texts, like a hoo-hoo sound. Um, I can't, like, make them happen. They just, they just happen when they need to happen. Um, I've noticed if I smoke a lot, like, a lot, then I'm pretty, pretty quiet. They'll happen every now and then. And so... The, we won't find out anything or be able to, to see the doctor until the 30th, which is annoying, but um, neurologists normally have a long waiting period in between each um, appointment, which, I don't know. It, I, it, like, if you don't know what's going on with the person, I think it should you should have a little bit of priority where they're coming in closer, because like me... I'm getting worse as we're, as like she's like lollygagging along on this. Like I, I know she's probably not doing that. I know she has a lot of other people that are probably more sick than me. But sometimes it just feels like she's piddling and I don't know. I like her. Like the last time I talked to her, I feel like I got a little bit closer to her a little bit, but like. I don't know. I just haven't really connected with this doctor yet, and I could go to another doctor, I guess, but finding one that is close enough and that has my insurance is really hard, and, um, I don't know. So we'll see what I do. I might go to another doctor after this other appointment, depending on what she says, but I'm going to talk to her about Tourette's again, because I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did bring it up once before, and she kind of, like... It might be it, but we're going to do, we're going to check into seizures because she thought they were seizures. I really think it's Tourette's. It says self-diagnosable, so now for my piercing. I want, um, it is a septum piercing. 
I don't know the gauge of it yet. I forgot to ask, but I think it's pretty. I like to call it my door knocker. I sit there like watching TV and I notice I'm doing this. It's fun. It's like my own stem toy on my face. I love it. I think it's really pretty. I know not everybody likes septum piercings, but I like them. I think they're very pretty and snazzy. And I'm um, very happy that I got my piercing. Um, I do want to get my um, Medusa or Filtrum piercing, whatever you want to call it. You can call them both names. But um, I think that's really pretty too. I know some people think I'll look good with it and other people would not think I look good with it. But all that matters is that I think I look good with it. So I'm weird and I like try to fake piercings before I get them. Um, I think, I don't know, I kind of feel like that's responsible. It might be weird, but it's responsible. So I got like, what are they called? These little things. And I put it over my lip, and I think just from doing that, you can like pretend that the metal thing's not there, and um, try to see what a dot there, I guess, would look like. Um, yeah, like <laughs> I don't know, like when I was gonna get my nipples pierced, I had like those Bucky balls, if you know what those are called. They're like a stem toy, and I put it on each side of my nipple <laughs> to see if it would, if I thought it looked good on me, and I did. I, like I don't know, I think. Like, I don't think nipple piercings could ever look bad, honestly. But I think the piercing before I got it. I did the same thing with um, my um, septum piercing. I posted, like, a short video of me doing it and then deleted it. Um, but it's still on my Instagram if you want to watch it. But, yeah, I faked my piercing with a... Um, I took a horseshoe type and broke it in half and stuck it on each side. And I thought that's what I was going to get pierced with, but I got pierced with this. And I honestly like this look better than the horseshoe thing on me. So, I like it. I think um, there is one piece of jewelry online that I'm already looking at that I want to buy. And um, I think I'm going to have um, my piercer get me one that's the same size as this and make it like a gunmetal. Because I want a black septum ring. I really like the way black septums look. I've always liked the way black septums look. I think they're pretty. But, like, all of them have, like, a coating on them, and those coatings can fall off, and I don't want that. Um, especially because my body's uh, a bitch and likes to complain about every living thing in the world. Like, when I got my nipples done, I had titanium in, and um, they weren't happy. <laughs> I had to go to somebody and get some really expensive jewelry. To help pierce, like, not help pierce them, but to help them heal. Because I was on, like, two years and they still hadn't healed. And now this is three years and they're still, like, working on healing. But they're, they're like, so much better now. And I'm not taking them out. Like, once I get a piercing, I stick with the piercing if I like it. Um, but, yeah, I just had to, like, do a sea salt soak for, like, two years straight. It was fun. But, um, yeah, I'm... I like all my piercings. I have. I keep having to stop because of these stupid trucks. I'm really low energy in this video too. I apologize. He stopped. Anyway, so some random information about sets and piercings that you probably don't care about. Um, it originated from Native Americans and another tribe that I can't remember. But a lot of tribes started with them, and um, some of them meant that you were getting married, and others just meant that you were, like, uh, a warrior. So, let's make up a story. I guess, like, there is, like, an enemy, in, and somebody in the tribe, like, fought the enemy and won or something, you know? They would take one of, I think it was a rib cage bone, or some kind of really small bone of the enemy. I can't remember which, what it called but they would you they would pierce the septum and then use that bone as the jewelry and it made the top of their nose look um flatter and um they did that also with pig's bone too it kind of just depends on what it was for some people actually used bone um wood too so they'd make the wood really soft and smooth and shove it up there <laughs> And it would just make the bridge of the nose right here look really flat and fierce. 
and so it was a very um, macho thing to do for these people and um, now like mo most people associate it with a bull I keep looking at the piercing most people associate it with a bull um, and my dad does too he's he said that a septum piercing means you're weak and tamed and if you know anything about me I'm the least tamed person there is um, but I think it's pretty that's why I got it oh no my dad brought up the how um, piercings have a meaning and maybe back then they had more of a meaning I think today if there's a meaning you have to ask the individual assuming a meaning is kind of pointless because you're most likely going to be wrong um, but I think it's pretty but, um, yeah, I'm happy I did it. I think it's like a week or a week and a half that I've had it. Yeah. I'm happy with it. I think it's so pretty. Um, I want to talk a little bit about my channel. Um, it's going to be mostly about my health, but, um, I'm going to also make videos that aren't necessarily about my health. They'll be related to me and things that are happening in my life and stuff. But um, I don't want everything to be just about my health. Um, sometimes that can be a little too negative. I don't know. I just want to, to tell you all about positive things that are happening about my life. And um, I want to make videos dedicated to positivity and stuff and self-love and stuff like that. So, um... I kind of talked about that a little bit on um, my first video a little bit, but for some reason I have this hang up about where my channel is only health and it's not only health. Um, so I feel like I need to say this again to, for some reason, I don't know why, but um, I'm going to start posting some other videos eventually that aren't related to my health, that'll be related about me and just pretty much anything that um, I want to do on my channel. I'm kind of in a bump in the road kind of because of how long everything that I need to do is taking. Insurance is looking for a place that I can do like genetic testing and um, you know waiting for appointment times is um, annoying and aggravating and during those times you know I'm just at home, so I've been thinking of ways to kind of fill in the gaps between appointments and stuff, and I was thinking about doing vlogs and stuff, but I honestly don't do very much during the day. I kind of just watch TV and clean and stuff. Um, reasoning being is because, you know, I'm not really being treated, so, you know, I don't have any spoons to do anything. I only have, like, enough spoons to do daily living, like brushing my hair, teeth cleaning the house, or not the house, but cleaning my room and the bathroom, and, um, you know, just living. I'm kind of stuck with places I can go to because I have to have my mom take me if I'm going to be out far or long because I need the wheelchair, um, and I can't transport it by myself, and I really don't want my mom to take me anywhere. Um, I guess I could always have her take me somewhere, maybe, but I don't know, it just, it's just such a hassle to get that thing out of the car. I'm very thankful that I can use it in the house and stuff, but um, I'm really eager to get that other wheelchair that I'm working on getting. My channel is going to be branching off a little bit from health, not too much, because I, I want to focus on my health, that's what my channel is about. It's about my journey of getting diagnosed and my chronic illness journey and... Um, me mostly you know i feel so awkward talking about this i don't know why before i leave i want to leave y'all with a quote it's by deborah day nourishing yourself in a way that helps you blossom in the direction you want to go is attainable and you are worth the effort so i want to say thank you to everybody that's watching this video i'm sorry if it's a little bit boring it's kind of just like an update video you know um, been having a little bit of, um, trouble deciding what I'm going to fill the gaps of, um, time period that we're waiting on going to other doctors and stuff. Um, I want it to be related to my health, but it might not be, and I hope that's okay. Um, I just don't want it to be, like, 30 days or a month or, like, over a week, you know, something really long where I haven't uploaded. Um, and I honestly really like doing this. 
so um, I'm going to keep my channel is going to stay pretty much the same but I also am going to branch out a little bit on times when I'm waiting on doctor's appointments and so um, I talked a little bit about what I'm gonna go into into on my first video a little bit but that video is kind of cringy um, I was very awkward in it I felt <laughs> but um, you know self-love positivity um, LGBT um, maybe a little bit of atheism um, not too much anything that I do would be respectful um, it would just be like I don't know you'll see I, like I guess I think there's a video I want to do of um, things you can say instead of I'll pray for you or um, I don't know like there, I know I want to make a video about limiting b limiting beliefs I am making two videos right now that um, one of them is going to take several months to make, and it is for interstitial cystitis month, which is in September, so it'll come out then. And then I'm having another video about interstitial cystitis, which is very, very personal. Um, very nervous about putting it up, but I'm positive other people have struggled with it, and um, I felt very alone dealing with it and going through that time in my life, so... I really just want to kind of be the person to admit it openly, even though I'm desperately scared that I'm going to get more hate, or maybe y'all just will not like me anymore, or you'll think I'm gross. I don't know what, I'm, I don't know, I don't really think that will happen, but that's like my negative thoughts that are happening, and um, you know, I don't think very many people are going to understand, um, unless they've been close to it or have been there themselves. It's authentic, and I want to be as authentic and open as I can be, and even though I'm scared, I'm willing to do it. So, um, I haven't had any trouble with y'all being unrespectful yet, but, um, I am a little nervous about it, so I've been kind of procrastinating a lot on that video, um, slowly editing it, and it's also very hard to edit because it's, like, um, a long story it's you know 15 years of my life or spanning across 15 years of my life so it's very um brings up a lot of stuff a lot of um things that um were hard but that I managed to overcome and it's a story that I think needs to be told and um there needs to be more awareness about interstitial cystitis because that's actually the reason I got fired from one of my jobs. I was fired because of that disease. So it should be covered under the Disabilities Act, but when you live in a right to work state, proving that is very hard. I hope everybody has an amazing day and I wanna say thank you for being alive. I love you, bye.